Yeah, it's standard with the of the major sensitive equipment. Miners may not think much about this equipment during their shift. However, it becomes very important when an emergency occurs. Being on a mine rescue team, we had to go into a, a, a mine that was on fire. And the people that, that came out of the mine before we had arrived, it saved their lives. If you learn how to use the unit, properly donned and properly maintained, it will save your life in a mine emergency. This is an M20 self-contained self-rescuer, SCSR. It is designed to be worn on the belt on a daily basis. If you ever need to escape from your mine through unbreathable air, the M20 will supply about 1.5 liters of oxygen per minute. It is rated for 10 minutes of use for escape. It can be a lifesaver. However, it must be cared for and maintained daily. The inspection, care, and use of the Osinko Incorporated M20 self-contained self-rescuer. First, we'll emphasize some of the M20 features. We'll show you step-by-step step how to thoroughly inspect the unit before you take it into your workplace. We will show you examples of units showing signs of normal wear and tear compared to those with evidence of excessive wear and tear. This will help you make thorough daily inspections, which are vitally important to ensure that your SCSR will work properly when needed. Finally, we will review proper donning techniques with you and show you what it is like to wear the SCSR in an evacuation exercise. Therefore, you will want to watch closely while we show you training aids in the care and use of this life-saving apparatus. It may be one of the most important lessons in your life. While you are using the M20 in a life-saving scenario, oxygen continuously flows from the cylinder to the breathing bag, starting when the breathing assembly is pulled from the base. During inhalation, oxygen is pulled from the bag through the scrubber and into the mouthpiece. During exhalation, carbon dioxide-laden air is exhaled into the mouthpiece through the scrubber and into the breathing bag. Sometimes during low work rates, the oxygen regulator will supply more oxygen than the user can consume and excess gas exits the relief valve. The starting of the oxygen flow, the increased flow rate during high work rates, and the occasional exhausting of gas through the relief valve all occur automatically. The user needs only to breathe. The M20, this escape device, was surprising. Not only was it easy to dawn, but the air in which it was flowing, it was just like breathing normally as they stand here. The device within the first couple of minutes starts to generate some heat. The heat increased slightly within the first five minutes. It never got any hotter after that point in time. It just felt like normal breathing. The air becomes moist, warm, but nothing that interfered with the operation, nor did it interfere with me breathing through the device. The M20 is a one-time use device. After use, it may be returned to Osinko for refurbishment or disposed of in accordance with local regulations. The recommended storage temperature range of the M20 is 10 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. If the M20 is exposed to temperature extremes, inspect the unit to ensure that the cylinder pressure gauge is in the green at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If escape is necessary, don the device regardless of temperature. The M20 is designed to be carried on the belt on a daily basis. If it is carried daily, it should be inspected daily. Osenko Incorporated recommends inspecting the M20 before each shift. In addition to the daily inspection, a 90-day inspection is still required if the unit is carried daily. If the M20 is stored according to an approved MSHA storage plan, it should be inspected every 90 days. The M20 is designed for a service life of 15 years if properly inspected and if the conditions of use are observed. Mandatory factory service is required after 10 years if stored and 5 years if the M20 is worn on the belt. Inspect the factory service date label on the base and remove the unit if past the mandatory factory service dates. Check the gauge. The pointed white indicator on the gauge is normally in the green at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, signifying full cylinder pressure. 
If the case is damaged and the gauge cannot be read, the unit must be removed from service. If the view through the clear base or gauge window is obstructed for any reason, such that a proper examination cannot be performed, the M20 must be removed from service. Inspect the apparatus for the indications of high force impacts. Any unit that has been misused should be removed from service immediately. Any suspect unit should be sent to the manufacturer for examination. Look now as we show conditions you should watch for. The case is cracked, burned, deformed, or excessively worn. There is an excessive gap between the cover and the base, or the tamper indicating ball is missing. These are indications that the unit has been opened and reclosed. The latch or cover band is damaged. There are several dents or wear spots in the band, or the band is out of position. The pressure gauge is bent or the white indicator needle is broken. There is dirt, debris, or moisture visible through the base or gauge window. The belt loops are broken. If any of these signs are present, the M20 must be removed from service and returned to Osinko Incorporated for servicing. Now, let us review. In a proper visual inspection, the case itself is first examined for damage. Is there excessive gap between the cover and the base? Is the tamper indicating ball missing? Is the latch or cover band damaged? Are there severe dents or worn areas in the band or is the band out of position? Is the pressure gauge bent or white indicator needle broken? Is any dirt, debris or moisture visible through the base or gauge window? Are any belt loops broken? If any of these signs are present, the unit must be removed from service. The M20 is very rugged, but to ensure that it functions properly when used, avoid the following common abuses. Attempting to reclose the case after the M20 is accidentally opened, dropping the M20, particularly when taking off the belt, cleaning it with anything other than a soft brush, immersing the M20 in water. Even though the M20 has been tested to withstand immersion in water, it is not recommended on a regular basis. Sitting on the M20, dragging the M20 on the ground, placing it near heat greater than 140 degrees Fahrenheit, putting tape or stickers on the M20 that would impede its opening or reading the gauge. Don the M20 using the following six steps. First, release the yellow lever and discard the cover. Next, remove the breathing assembly by pulling the yellow neck strap upward. Then, insert the yellow mouthpiece. This is followed by fitting the yellow nose clip. After that, fit and adjust the yellow neck strap. Finally, breathe through your mouth and escape. These six fundamental steps should be practiced numerous times by the trainees. To review, first the worker released the yellow lever and discarded the cover. He removed the unit by pulling the yellow neck strap upward. Then he inserted the yellow mouthpiece, fit the yellow nose clip, and adjusted the yellow neck strap. Finally, the worker breathed through his mouth and moved out of danger. Reminders while wearing. Never remove your mouthpiece. If warm air or resistance becomes uncomfortable, reduce your speed or work rate. Remember that breathing with the M20 differs from normal breathing. The temperature of the inhaled air will be slightly higher and there will be some breathing resistance. This is in no way harmful and never warrants removal of the mouthpiece until you are out of danger. Your SCSR cannot be expected to help you in an emergency if it has not been cared for and inspected properly, or if you do not know how to get it on and understand wearing and breathing through such an apparatus. The guy that I was working with, my buddy, he and I had just gone through the SCSR retraining class that shift before we went into mine. So it was still fresh in our mind how to put it on. So, you know, we proceeded to put ours, ours on. And as you looked around, you could see other people were struggling with theirs. I do fully realize the importance of the SCSR. It's been proven many, many times, many times over, and, and under actual uh, fire conditions to save people's lives. Know the daily maintenance of your SCSR. 
know how to wear it, how to use it, and know when to use it. It can save your life.